With Russia seemingly poised to invade Ukraine at any moment, Joe Biden is still pushing for a diplomatic solution, something Vladimir Putin has said he's open to as well. Releasing video of what he said was Russian tanks retreating back to their bases. But Biden and NATO allies are understandably not taking Putin at his word and are getting ready for anything. We have uh, heard the signs from Moscow about uh, readiness to continue diplomatic uh, efforts. But so far, uh, we have not uh, seen any de-escalation on the ground. On the contrary, uh, it appears that Russia continues the military build-up. And although Biden says he has no plans to send American troops to fight in Ukraine, he's trying to make it clear that we very w well could feel the consequences of Russian aggression here at home in a variety of ways. I will not pretend this will be painless. There could be impact on our energy prices. And if Russia attacks the United States or our allies through asymmetric means, like disruptive cyber attacks against our companies or critical infrastructure, we are prepared to respond. I'm joined now by Congressman Jake Auchincloss of Newton, a former Marine who served in Afghanistan and a member of the House Subcommittee on National Security, International Development and Monetary Policy. Congressman, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for being here. It's good to be on. Thanks for having me. So how do you assess what the current situation is at the Ukrainian border? Well, it's dire. And America is not a fair weather friend. So when the situation is dire, we are going to be there. We are going to support a sovereign democracy standing up to a much bigger, more hostile neighbor. And we are going to work with our NATO allies to defend the territorial integrity of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Where do you fall on this? Putin says we're withdrawing troops. The U.S. now the State Department says they're actually adding troops. The Russians are to the border. Where does the truth lie? There's no reason to believe anything that Vladimir Putin says. He lies. And we need to see, and we have the ability to see through uh, really both open source and classified intelligence, whether or not Russia is demobilizing the bulk of its 130,000 troops amassed along three different sides of Ukrainian border. You know, uh, I think everybody watching knows that Donald Trump was essentially Putin's poodle and then enter Joe Biden. Uh, you know, I wake up this morning, I read Tom Friedman in the New York Times saying Biden's been brilliant, he's outmaneuvering Putin. Just days after reading in the Washington Post, which I'm sure you in particular saw, this reporting on this after-action report on what happened in Afghanistan, essentially questioning the judgment of Joe Biden. They don't do it directly, but saying the White House rejected the advice of military leaders about planning further ahead for the evacuation of Kabul, and it was rejected by the White House. So how is Biden doing on, on this exercise, a man who has huge foreign policy experience? Jim, I'm, I'm so glad you raised this, because this has been an under-discussed element of this crisis. Let's just compare where we were in 2018 versus where we are in 2022. 2018, Donald Trump goes to Helsinki, does a press conference with Vladimir Putin that was so uh, sycophantic that John McCain, a member of his own party, yeah. described as one of the most disgraceful performances in, in recent American history. Now, four years later, we have Joe Biden really outmaneuvering Vladimir Putin, going toe to toe with him and standing up, not just for the sovereign democracy of Ukraine, not just for NATO territorial integrity, but really for the post-war international rules-based order that the United States helped build and that Donald Trump did so much to denigrate. It really makes me very proud to watch President Biden in action. Now, we should save our, our celebration until we actually get out of this crisis uh, because it's, we're very much still in it, but it's absolutely worth reflecting upon. Now, to your point about Afghanistan, and it, it's a fair one and, and a timely one, I think we need to divorce the decision that Joe Biden made to exit the war in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. which was a high integrity decision that had no glory attached to it versus the execution of, of that withdrawal. There's no question that the execution of that withdrawal uh, had deep flaws. We need an after action, not just of the withdrawal, but really of the whole 20 year window covering Democratic and Republican administrations to understand how the American public was lied to and mired in a forever war that we could not win with military solutions. Uh, and also looking at particular tactical decisions made in the, in the final years of the war.
You know, uh, I have uh, zero expertise in international diplomacy. I don't have much domestic diplomacy skill either, but it seems to me there are two critical ingredients, Congressman. One, threats have to be perceived as real, and two, uh, the loser, for lack of a better expression, has to have an off-ramp where they don't totally get humiliated. So let's take one at a time. I saw you on C-SPAN a couple of weeks ago, I think, talking about unity. And it seems to me that for a threat to be seen as real, you need unity. One, is Germany still, is, are they on board in terms of just saying no to this natural gas pipeline that Russia depends upon? And two, when you read stories about the United States Senate can't even agree on sanctions, not that the president can't do his own thing, you say to yourself, this is exactly the opposite of unity. Are we presenting enough of a united front for the threat to Putin to be real? To your point about how you handle this diplomacy, I think there's really three levers that President Biden can push on here. One is deterrence. So it is promising sanctions should Russia aggress across Ukrainian borders. The second is sending in lethal aid and technical support to Ukraine itself. And then the third is rallying our NATO allies and pre-deploying troops on the eastern frontier of NATO to assure our allies like Poland and, and Romania that we stand by Article 5 and by the territorial integrity of the Confederation. And President Biden is using all three, I think, quite artfully. Is there unity within NATO? Yes, I think the short answer is there is. And again, I think it's an important contrast from four years ago. Four years ago, NATO had to look to Angela Merkel to hold it together because Donald Trump was such a disaster. Now, NATO looks to Joe Biden. And uh, I think that's a telling change of the last four years. Is there enough unity in Congress? There's an old saying that politics should stop at the nation's shore. Uh, I think, that is happening to a certain degree. I have seen my Republican colleagues on, on the other side of the aisle, to their credit, stand up and support the president in our briefings. It's not happening sufficiently in the Senate. As you say, we need to get a, bill, a sanctions bill passed that strengthens his hand with Vladimir Putin. And it's certainly not happening on Fox News, where you had the likes of Tucker Carlson yeah. basically serving as a mouthpiece for the Kremlin. Have we provided an, an out for Putin, should he choose to take it without humiliation? Uh, it's it's a great question because in, in diplomacy and frankly in politics at all levels, you want to be able to understand the press release that your opponent has to be <laughs> able to, to send, right? Yeah. And President Putin probably has a couple different press releases that he needs to be able to write. One is to the Russian political elite about how he has burnished Russia's image and, uh, and also protected their own assets. Uh, and then the other is going to have to be about Russia's national security position and his concerns about NATO's encroachment. I know that the administration is looking very carefully at what Vladimir Putin might need to back down without being seen to lose face. I think one would be being able to assure his elite political constituency that they're not going to be sanctioned to the degree that, that we are threatening them to. I think that's a something that's concerning them and that... Uh, by him being able to say, I've protected you from that, I think will we'll buttress his standing. And then number two will need to be some very artful language, really emanating, I think, from you, the Ukrainian president about their intentions going forward regarding NATO. Yeah. And that's really tricky because NATO membership is enshrined in the Ukrainian constitution. NATO has an open door policy, and we're not going to change that. The Russian president does not have a veto over NATO's membership. And yet, it's a little bit of an open secret that Ukraine is not joining NATO anytime soon. And so threading that needle is yeah. going to be quite delicate. Congressman, before you go, I was really glad to hear Joe Biden talk about potential consequences in the United States. And the one that I, as a layperson, consider most real and frightening is colonial pipeline on steroids, cyber attacks. I know we have the so-called Tiger team. We're allegedly preparing or prepared. Are we really prepared in this country for massive cyber attacks at critical pieces of our infrastructure? We're significantly more prepared than we were even a year or two ago. Much work remains to be done. CISA, the, the Federal Cybersecurity Infrastructure Agency, uh, has, is working with industry, in particular industry that, that controls critical assets 
to buttress their cyber defenses and working with insurance companies in the private sector to get the, the best technology there. We also need to have a very strong offensive deterrent and that's much more centralized. Russia needs to know that if they hit water, utilities, electoral systems, that there is going to be a massive cyber response that will uh, disproportionately impact their own critical infrastructure. The 2022 version of mutually assured destruction, I guess, is the bottom line. Uh, Jake Alkenklaus, thank you so much for your thoughts. Appreciate it. Nice to be on.